Amen. Are you ready for the word? If you are, just say, bring it on. Amen. I'm ready to share today. Open your Bible with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 18. We've been talking in recent days about the Holy Spirit. And uh, we've been focusing on that. And uh, we're going to end that series today because the Holy Spirit is a very important person in your life as a believer, right? And today I want to share with you on the subject, how to maintain a Spirit-filled life. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18 says this, Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. God has given us the Holy Spirit so that we can be salt and light to a hurting world. And I am committed to the concept that a healthy church is a church that honors and respects the person of the Holy Spirit and is empowered by the person of the Holy Spirit. I'm committed to that and believe in that. And, and I also believe that God is pleased when we take a look at the Word of God and when we understand that God has a balance in everything. Tell your neighbor, God is never off balance. We, we might get off balance sometimes, you know, but God is never off balance. And so I want to give you today some powerful balances from the Word of God having to do with maintaining the Spirit-filled life. How many of you say, Pastor, I would really love for at, the, at, at my funeral, whenever that is, 100 years from now, for them to say, hey, the preacher to say, that person maintained a Spirit-filled life. They were full of the Holy Spirit. They had the fruit of the Holy Spirit. They were empowered by the Holy Spirit. They had the joy of the Holy Spirit. They had the peace of the Holy Spirit. I would love for that to be the testimony of my life. Amen. Amen. But We've got to do things in balance, and so I want to give you some balances today, and so you can follow along in your notes on the screen, whatever, and we're going to just share this word today. First of all, number one, we must balance our past experience with our present experience. Amen? I recall the moment that I was filled with the Holy Spirit when I was about 10 years of age. I've shared that numerous times in this church, and, and uh, even in this uh uh, series, I, I shared that, and uh, that was a very precious moment for me. I can recall that experience that I have, but that was 50 years ago, okay? Uh, you know, that it ha has little impact on my life today other than having an experience with God. Well, but what I have learned is that the Holy Spirit is a now Holy Spirit. I've got to have a present day, right now, experience with the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit in my life. And I'll just have you know that it is very biblical to be able to remember the moment you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, all right? It's, it's, it, but but I, this is, I want to say this as well. You will not be able to live in the power of that experience for very long. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's supposed to be like a river flowing through us, right? Uh, you know, and I'm grateful for that today. So let me just give you an example today from the Word of God. Peter is a perfect example of someone who lived a life that was very balanced in the Holy Spirit, okay? And of course, we know that Peter was one of the initial believers, right, who was at the first out, uh, initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2 because he was there because he got up and preached that day, right? And so let's remember who this was. This was the formerly very afraid, oops, sorry, Jesus, I betrayed you, Peter, right? <laughs> That's who he was until he received an empowerment for his life in the power of the Holy Spirit. And man, that day Peter changed, right? He stood up with the 11 and he preached a powerful message. 3,000 people were converted that day, added to the church. And, and, and I don't think Peter ever forgot that experience. How many think that for all of his life and probably all of eternity, he'll remember that? And uh, we know he didn't because Peter went to Cornelius' house. 
and the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles for the first time. And I want you to look at the scripture. Maybe you've never looked at it quite like this. Acts 11 and verse 15, this is what it says. It says, as I, and I, Peter's talking, he says, and as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them. What does it say? As he had come on us at the beginning. Those are some powerful words, as he had come on us. He was remembering his initial experience when he received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But you see, here's the question that I have for you today. Was that Peter's only experience with the Holy Spirit according to the Word of God? I don't think so. We cannot live in the power of one experience with the Holy Spirit, but rather we've got to maintain a lifestyle in the Holy Spirit. Because just a few weeks... uh, Uh, Later, as Peter stood before the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 8, I want you to notice what it says. It says, then Peter, notice what it says, filled with the Holy Spirit. That's in present tense. In that present moment, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say, and Peter, having been filled on the day of Pentecost, no, Peter was filled on that very same day. He maintained a filling of the Holy Spirit. Later on in that same chapter, they had a prayer meeting, Acts 4.31. You can look it up. It says and it says and, and that they all began to speak in tongues, and, they, and, they, and, they, and the Holy Spirit filled them up, and, and they began to speak proclaimed the word of God very boldly and we know Peter was there in that prayer meeting so uh, what I'm trying to say is this all right if you're gonna put something on Twitter here's what you put on the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not an experience to be remembered but it's a lifestyle to be maintained Peter did that. He stayed full of the Holy Spirit his whole life. He actually wrote two of the books of the Bible first and second Peter, amen, amen. And all through his life and ministry, he depended on the Holy Spirit. Even in the moment when Peter was crucified upside down, I can guarantee you that the Holy Spirit was with him, giving him strength and power even in that moment. Amen, amen. And so very evident to me that it is not something that's just in the past. It's in the present moment. Also, the Greek word used to describe the Holy Spirit is known in the Scripture as the word paraclete. Paraclete. It's a very descriptive word. It's a powerful word. It actually means one who's called alongside to help. John 14, 6 says this, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. That word translated counselor, here is the word paraclete. And it's some, verse, some versions say a comforter, some versions say helper, but it's all the same thing, right? It's a, a, a person that's called along side to help. Amen. And I can remember when I first received, but I'm going to tell you I need him even today as I'm preaching this message. Come on, somebody. And so the question is not, have, did you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit? The question is this, are you filled now? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit now? Are you walking in the fruit of the Spirit now? Do you have the fire of the Holy Spirit now? Many people don't understand that for the Holy Spirit to be active and to move in your life, it it depends upon your spiritual life. You've got to be alive spiritually. Come on. You've got to have a fervency in your heart. Now, Many years ago when I was a boy, we we started camping. I've been camping my whole life, all right? And we used to go to a campsite, and there'd be a little fire ring there, and and I'd get there, and I'd, you know, maybe someone hadn't built a fire there for a while, and I'd go over and look at the ashes, all gray ashes, a few little black pieces of charcoal, and I'd stir all that up. Let me tell you what, that was not very exciting, all right? But let me tell you, when we got the fire going, and the fire was burning, hello, it felt completely different, in fact... (coughs) Excuse me, I still enjoy a good campfire. Come on, how many of you know what I'm talking about? We've got to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. In fact, Hebrews 12, 29 says this, Our God is a consuming fire. God wants for the power of His Holy Spirit to empower you all the days of your life. I remember when I first preached what I felt like was my first really anointed, Spirit-filled message Way back in Ottumwa, Iowa, one of the men of the church came up to me and they said, he said to me, he said, you're going to cool down one day. I'm like, okay, I don't think so. I'm not going to cool down. 
Come on. How many say, I don't want to be like a bunch of dead, dry ashes. I want to have the Holy Spirit fire burning in my heart. Come on. Can you give Jesus a big hand of praise today? You say, well, how do I keep that Holy Spirit passion burning? How do I keep that love for Jesus in my heart fresh? Here's what you've got to do. Number one, you've got to develop a real prayer life. You've got to have a real prayer life. Jesus, the scripture says he had the Holy Spirit without measure. Uh, Dwight said today, he was born of the Spirit. Amen. Jesus was born in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. You're so kind. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Amen. Appreciate that. Uh, but here's the thing about Jesus. Even though he had the Holy Spirit without measure, he was a prayer person. He had to listen to what the Father said. He had to go every day, get his instruction from the Father. Sometimes he'd get up early to pray. Sometimes he would pray all night long. How many know that prayer is like putting wood on the fire? Hello? Prayer is what keeps you passionate about the things of God. And, the, and in the New Testament church, they prayed all the time. If an obstacle faced them, guess what they did? They prayed until the obstacle was moved. Come on. If they were saying goodbye to a friend before he got on a boat, what did they do? They prayed for one another. I don't mean a little prayer like this one God bless me and my wife this my son John and his wife us four no more amen no not a prayer like that a, a prayer that's genuine a prayer that comes from the heart a prayer that cries out to God with a passion and a concern amen when you have that kind of passion it will it will really it, it will allow the Holy Spirit to flow through you and a lot of people think that prayer is just asking God a list of petitions Lord this is what I need you to do for me I need a new car and I need a job a better job and I need no 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 don't do that no let prayer become a time of communing with the Holy Spirit of just saying Holy Spirit I just want to be with you today Jesus I just want to be with you today day let me be in your presence Lord let me turn on some YouTube videos and get in the presence of God amen and commune with the Holy Spirit let me tell you when you do that you want to know what happens it's like the Lord reaches his finger down and he stirs up the embers inside your heart and all of a sudden you get up from that place of prayer and you are on fire ready to go ready to serve ready to you be used by the Lord come on how many of you say I need a real prayer life in my life amen God's calling us to be a praying church and then if you want to have the Holy Spirit active in your life you've got to have a daily dose of the word hey, one of the greatest mistakes of people who, 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 who are spirit filled has been to neglect the daily discipline of Bible reading Holy Spirit provides you with the power you need, but the Bible is your daily guide hello, come on, how many of you just believe we need a daily guide, amen now, a man out on a ship, out on the ocean, has two things that keep that ship going and in the right direction. First of all, there's a means of powering the boat, right? They may hoist a sail. They may burn coal. They may have a gasoline engine or maybe even atomic power. I don't know. But there's some way where they get their power. How many know the Holy Spirit's our power? Amen? But let me tell you, you don't just need power. You've got to know where you're going. And out on the middle of the boat in an ocean, you better have a map and a compass. Amen. <laughs> so you know where you're going and how to get there. Hello? You see, it takes more than just power to get where you're going. You need direction. The Holy Spirit gives you power, and the book gives you direction. Jeff Williams and I had dinner with a guy year, years ago, probably 18 years ago. We had dinner with a man who had called the church, and he was an interesting guy. He bought us dinner. The dinner was wonderful, but the guy was a, a little loopy, okay? This is what he said. He said to me, I mean, literally, he said, I never read the Bible. I said, well, why not? He says, why should I read the Bible when I have a, at that time, DSL was a big thing. He said, I have a DSL connection with the Holy Spirit, and God's just constantly downloading everything that I need. Boy, you talk about raising some red flags with me. How many of you know we need the Word of God? Come on. We need it every single day. Come on. If you're grateful for the... For, how, and let me tell you something. The same Holy Spirit that empowered you is the same Holy Spirit that inspired the very Word of God that you're reading. Come on. Amen. It's given by inspiration by the breath of God. Amen. We need a fresh experience with the Holy Spirit. And that keeps it fresh is 
reading the Word. And then third, if you want to maintain a really powerful experience in the Holy Spirit, you better do something in service for God. you got to do something for the Lord. Years of observation has shown me that the people in whom the Holy Spirit flows the most